Could you hear me? Uh, first, of all, first of all, I want to thank to the organizer, uh, NTU and Professor Yam uh, Fassbinder to invite me to this workshop, which is a wonderful event. And uh, in the morning and uh, just now, and speakers are all talk about how to uh, you con construct agent-based modeling to study complex, complex systems. And uh, in my lecture, uh, I will uh, talk from another aspect, which is to which is a kind of method that to intervene in a multi-agent system, and we, I call this soft control, and this is uh, proposed by me and my colleague. Well, um, if we consider uh, if we consider uh, a system that consists of many agents, and they have uh, local and simple inter interaction among them. And then we will see uh, new properties emerge from the microscopic level, and such as uh, phase transition, pattern formation, group movement, and swarm intelligence, and so on. And this is actually uh, what the paper called More is Different, presented by the Nobel Lauren uh, Phillips Anderson for about 40 years ago. And as we know that collective behavior is one of the most important topics of uh, complex systems, and I, uh, I classify the research on collective behavior into three categories. And the first type is analysis, which is given the local rule of the agents, and then what is the collective behavior of the system in the high level. And there are lots of work working in this area. And the second category is design. That is, given the design collective behavior, how we construct the, the, the construct the, the uh, low, local rule for agents in the microscopic level. And for, for instance, like swarm intelligence and end colony optimization and formation control and so on. And the third kind that um, is, I, I call this intervention, that is given the local rule of the agents and also given the, dis, the desired collective be, the behavior of the system then how can we intervene in the collective behavior and to achieve what we want? And I call this uh, approach soft control, and this is what this talk mainly about. Um, in the following part, I will demonstrate the idea of soft control uh, through two case studies. And the first one is, uh, is about Foki model, and I will use soft control to uh, induce synchronization. And the second one is to use the idea of a soft control to, indu to promote cooperation in a multi-person game. And now we go to the first example, the case study. And this movie, I took this movie from the window out of my home, and it's a, it's a group of birds. And we all see that the flocking of birds is a kind of collective behavior. Yet uh, sometimes birds can be dangerous if you find birds flocking in the airport. And a way to drive them away is uh, to use the canoe to shoot and scare them. <laughs> this is not so gentle. So can we guide the birds, uh, birds fly if we know how they fly? In a more professional way is to ask the question that is, how we control the collective behavior of a multi-agent system? OK, to answer these questions in a theoretical way, first we need a model. Uh, I think many of you heard about the model of boy, and actually there is a more simple model that is proposed by uh, Vixet and his colleague, and we call this a Vixet model. And in this model, uh, agents moving in a two-dimensional space, and they with, with constant speed, but the handling is wiring. And each agent, we define the neighborhood of each agent uh, with a circle that the radius is R, that means agent can only uh, see other agents or interact with other agents when the other agent's location is, uh, the distance is less than R. And so uh, the a uh, agent will decide the, decide the handing of their next step based on a rule called alignment. That is, it will try to move uh, towards the average handing of neighbors. And this is a very simple model, and every agent only knows the local information and follow a local rule to make decision. And here is a computer simulation. 
and um, these little guys are agent, agents, and the red line represent their handing. And you will see that uh, a kind of forking behavior here, even though it just has only one simple rule. Okay. So the, a very natural question is to ask, in what condition the group will converge to synchronization? For example, for this group, they do not it does not converge. They will, they will separate into several subgroups and they will, they will never converge. And for this case, in this case that they finally they converge, they fly with the same handing. There are lots of, uh, in, in the recent 10 years, uh, there are lots of mathematicians and control scientists working on this problem. And the first interesting result is um, proposed uh, in 2003 and they, they, they claim that if the neighborhood neighboring graph on each time interval is dryly connected, then the linearized, linearized uh, Wixler model will synchronize at the end. And later on by my uh, colleague, uh, they, they give much more, uh, more results and they um, give, a serum, give several serums to, uh, to tell the, uh, how the size of the group, how the radios, how radios are, how the uh, speed will affect synchronization. Uh, yet, uh, the sufficient and necessary condition is still unknown. Um, they still need further study. But the question here for me, to me is, uh, what if the group does not satisfy this sufficient condition and the group does not synchronize? Then can we intervene into the group and help, help the system to synchronize? We start destroying the original system. That is to say that we could not change the local rule of the already existing agent. So this is uh, this uh, bring out our research called soft control, which is done by me and my colleagues and my friends. Okay, then the key point of soft control is 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 present. Um, we consider a system that have uh, many agents, and each agents. Each agent follows a local rule, so the system is autonomous and it's a distributed system. And agents will locally interact with each other. Most of them, in most of the time, they're not isolated. That means the local effect will spread and may, and may affect the whole. Now, uh, we want to control the collective behavior, but here, there's no, we, we could not change the local rule of the already existing agent. And there is also no uh, global, global parameters that you can adjust to, to, to achieve our goal. Then what can we do? Uh, usually, we can add one or a few agents into the system. And this will not increase the computational complexity of the system, but it might not affect the collective behavior either. However, if these agents are special, which I call shield, um, that means uh, it's, the shield is controlled by us, and they do not follow the local rule of the, of the normal agents. But they are treated as an ordinary agent by the already existing agent. So this, this, uh, this proof that the local rule of the already existing agent did not, do not need to change. They still add as same as before. So by adding the shoe into the system, actually it's adding a control interface to the system. So we can control the system through controlling the shoe. And that's the point. So shoe is not a leader because they are not specially being trained by the, be treated by the normal agents. So this is not a leader follower type. And here the con control is soft and it seems weak. And it, this approach is different from the distributed system approach and it's a kind of intervention in, in the distributed system, and it's a new framework. Uh, let me show you the idea for soft control uh, by a computer simulation, uh, which is just like a game in, uh, in this step. And this is a group without shield, and we can see that the group do, does not synchronize. They, they fly as, and divide it into several subgroups. And now the same group, and we put a shield in it. And I control, in this, in this movie, that I control the shield's position and its handing by my hand. 
So it's like playing a computer game. <laughs> so you will see that I, I try, first I try to make them fly, fly uh, in the same way and then put, make them get together into a group. And then later I will try to make them turn around. <laughs> Somebody think about the her shop, her, her, her dog? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a very simple idea, but uh, the, for the herd dog, the, the sheep knows it's a herd dog. They're scared. To the, but here, the, shield, the normal agent does not recognize that it's a, there is a shield there. They just cheat as, as a normal agent. So it will be a che cheated sheep in the, in the, in the herd that lead, lead the herd. It's something like that. Yeah. So actually, I can use uh, I can use the shield to do other tasks. Like I can seduce an uh, agent uh, out from the group, or I can make them separate. I can do many things by using a shield. Okay. Then uh, this is just like a game, and we not, we need some um, theoretical study, more serious study. And now I consider a case study and the problem. And here the problem uh, is defined. Uh, the, we consider the, syst the system that with a group of n agents with initial handing, which belong to zero to pi, and we put one shield into the system. And the goal for the shield is to make all the agents move to the direction of zero. That's uh, here is moving to the right, right side. And so, what is the strategy for the shield? Notice that uh, here the shield do not follow the alignment local rule. So its handing is not affected by the neighbors. And it has its own strategy, and it tries to affect the bad guys. The bad guys means that whose handing is not uh, close to zero. So, but we still need one more thing, that's the shield need more energy, that they can fa move faster than normal agent. Otherwise, they, they might not uh, come up with, catch up with uh, a bad guy, and they can never put a fat on it. Okay, then how a shoe affect the bad guy? It's very simple. That is to be the neighbor of the bad guy. So in this case, this is uh, this guy. This is a normal agent, and its handing is not to zero. And this is a shoe, and a sh the, the shoe is inside the neighborhood of this bad guy. And then after two steps, and the, the bad guy almost converge to zero, handing zero. But how to make handings of all agents converge to zero. That needs much more details of the strategy. Uh, according to the jolly kinetic theorem, which I, uh, di I, I briefly described about the research on the self-organized behavior, that if the shield can periodically affect every agent with handing zero, then the goal will converge to handing zero. But then how, how how does a shield move? That after it affects a target agent, and then how does the shield move to the next target agent without putting negative effect on the group? For example, in this case, if the, the shield, after the shield affects this agent, and it wants to affect the other agent on the, right, on the left side, and then you, you can say that we can move in this way, but this is not a good method, not a good thing, because you will put negative effect on these two guys. When, you, when the shoe moving with, uh, with a handing, which is not zero, and is close to these two guys, it will put negative effect on them and make their handing f far away from zero. So we cannot do, do it in this way. A simple idea is uh, to affect this guy, and then we go far, go far away outside the group and we make a big U-turn and then we hit the next target agent from the, from the left side. But this is not efficient. Actually, it can move inside the group. They can find short paths as long as they don't put negative effect on the group. So the point here is the shield should move with handing zero when they have neighbors. And otherwise, they can move with any direction. So this is the, uh, the detail of the strategy for moving, for designing their handing. And this is a demo for the shield that using this strategy to uh, affect the group. And you will see this, this is the shield and it moving inside a group and keep, uh, keep working, moving to attack every, 
to affect every agent, but without putting the negative effect. Okay. And uh, we proved that the, the shield with this strategy, the group can synchronize. And the maximum speed of the shield to affect all agents in a, in a period is limited too. So actually, if the shield speed is larger than the speed of normal agent, the group can synchronize. Just a little bit la faster is okay, it's fine. But um, as we will see in the computer simulation that we done for different size of the group and different speed of the shield, we, we found that larger system will require longer time to converge to synchronization. And higher speed of the shield usually will lead to uh, faster convergence. Okay, there are more questions following this line, and like, what is the optimum strategy for the shield, and what if the shield can only see locally, and how much information we need to know about the system, and what if we don't know the local rule of the agent, how does the shield learn and lead the group? Well, um, this is the end for the, for the Wixen model, and actually soft control is not just for the Wixen model, and it could be applied to other system if the system is uh, with many autonomous agents and with local interaction. So uh, I will show you the, the second example, that is to use soft control to induce, uh, to promote cooperation in a multi-person game. Uh, we consider a multi-agent model that uh, player, uh, agents are playing repeated person dilemma game and cooperation might not emerge in this self-organized uh, multi-agent systems. And then we put shield into the system and it will promote cooperation. Uh, we, we can see that cooperation exists any, exist in any time and anywhere from the animal population to the human society. But also we, we see defection, we found defection in groups of self-interest agents. And this can be explained by a classical game called Prisoner Dilemma. I think many of you know this game, that if both players cooperate, they will both win. But if one cooperate, the other defect, then the cooperator will lose more and the defector will win more. So if they both defect, then they both lost. Because every player want to maximize their own profit, so defection is always the best choice, no matter what the opponent take. Then leads to the Nash, this is uh, the, the, the mature law, uh, defection is the Nash equilibrium. And this shows why two individuals might not cooperate, even if it appears that it's, it is the best to do so. To study cooperative uh, behavior in a population, uh, people use a multiplayer repeated prisoner dilemma game model. However, people find cooperation level is still very low under some circumstances. In uh, Robert Aslaw's book, uh, he asked a question that is, in which conditions can cooperation occur from self-interest individual without centralized control? And most people uh, work, work on this, uh, people work on this uh, problem mainly focus on the three types, on these three types. The first is to find good strategy for agents, and the other is to assign agents with extra ability, like uh, have attack or they can move, and the third type is to lo locate agents on a, on a network structure, regular network, scale-free ne network, and see, and to see which which structure will encourage cooperation. And they are all about uh, how to design the system. But what if the system is given and show no, shows no cooperation? What can we do here? And again, we put uh, shields into the, into the group and we try to promote cooperation in a non-cooperative non group while keeping play rule strategy of the original populations. So our work based on a multi-person repeated prisoner dilemma games. And there we found cooperation level, which is defined as the frequency of cooperative action in the group, is very low. And then after we put some shield into the group, it can increase the cooperation level. Uh, first, let me uh, introduce the basic model, which is uh, have no shields. 
that it has NA normal agents, and the strategy for the normal agent is uh, we call this we call that reactive strategy, which is described by three parameters. Uh, YPQ. Y is the probability of cooperate cooperate on the first move, and P is the conditional probability of taking cooperation if the opponent opponent's last move is defection. And Q is the conditional prob probability of taking cooperation if the opponent's la last move is cooperation. And every two agents in the group will play an N unknown beta row prisoner dilemma game. And then after playing this, this uh, beta row game, they, they both will update their fitness and just to sum all the payoff they get through this game. And then uh, after all the players finish playing with the others, the system will uh, go into the procedure that is called uh, reproduction. The individual will, will re, uh, reproduce uh, itself, but subject to the, the rule of survival of the fitness. So the, the one have high fitness will have more offspring. offsprings. Uh, our simulation shows that in this basic model, the cooperation level is very low. This is the x x exos is the is the time is time. So when the system evolves, if I, finally the frequency of cooperation uh, gets to about like ten percent. So this is low. Okay. Now we add some shield into the into the system, and the ns is the number of shields. And here, shield will comply with the play rule in the original groups. That means the shield are treated as normal agents by the normal ones. But the shield can use different form of strategy, and they know nothing about the normal agent strategy before they interact. But they can recognize other shields and share information. And this is, uh, this is important to, to the self-control mechanism here. So uh, when a shield K plays with normal agent I, the shield will remember the action sequence of agent I, and the sh the, and shield K will send this information to other shields. And based on the uh, frequency of cooperation of the normal agent, the shield will take a, will use a strategy called frequency based tit for tat to make decision. So in this model, uh, we we have done some simulation. And this one, for this one, uh, we can see the red line is have no shield here, and the co cooperation level is very low. And then we put the green line is we is that we put uh, 150 shield into the group, and the blue line is uh, 100, uh, 450 into the group, and we found that have, having more shield, the cooperation level increase. And we also test other uh, parameters. And we found that the, this mechanism is robust to noise, and the sharing information is more important in a short term. That this beta is a, a small, small value, comparing to the case of long term uh, prisoner dilemma game. And if we consider that uh, the case of that players only inter, uh, in, uh, only play with a proportion of the group, that's not a complete intervention then a shield will have a chance to select the opponent to play. And this will, will increase, enhance the performance significantly because their select, uh, selection is based on the sharing information. And we also find out that uh, the shield can just uh, share uh, information with a proportion of other shields. So they do not need to share the information to all, with all the other shields and it's still effective. Okay, so from simulation, we see that shields can promote cooperation levels significantly in different scenarios, and we have also um, uh, we have also done some analytical work, and we proved that in the case of complete interaction, oh, sorry, if we have uh, enough shields, then the group can the frequency of cooperation of the group can converge to one. Okay, now let me summarize the. Um, of this 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 work, so the uh, here cooperation we found that cooperation is unlikely to occur in a population at some circumstance, and most people 
work on how to redesign the system to induce cooperation. And our rule is, is to promote cooperation by keeping play rule in the or original population by putting adding shoes. And so we found, find out that soft control is possible to promote cooperation and it's robust to noise and sharing knowledge is important and uh, selection based on sharing information is crucial to incomplete interaction case. And there's still more to study following this line. Like for example, we can study the influence of different spatial strategies and we can also consider different forms of strategy of shields. And we can also use a shield to destroy cooperation. Or we also thinking about to make a real person experiment uh, for, for the soft control idea. And we can also use cost soft control in other games. Okay, now going to the end <laughs> to, of this lecture. Uh, we see that soft control is for multi-agent system and its purpose is to change the collective behavior. But we cannot uh, adjust global parameters and there is, uh, and nor can we change the local rule of the already existing agent. But what we can do is to add, or, add one or a few special agents into the system. And two, by two case study, it shows that one or a few clever shows can change the collective behavior of the group. So it's like this and one to a lot. <laughs> but you have to have more strategy and a bit more energy. Um, we, we, we will want to um, continue the study on soft control. Uh, first is to try, the, try this idea to, on, on, into the uh, social system, economy system, in the future, like uh, panic or rumor control, um, market behavior, and some and things like that, and we can also uh, use soft control. The idea of soft control when we design an artificial multi-agent system, and in this way, uh, usually when people design a multi-agent system, they have to think carefully about the local rule, how to how to design the local rule for every agent, and then the the, the system can emerge what we want. But here, if we can put some shields, special shields into the system, it will help us. And uh, maybe we can just define very simple rules for normal agents, and but but decide uh, some a few clever shields to uh, to help the system to form to to emerge what we want. So this is a way for this design. And also, we want to study the uh, controllability of uh, soft control in, in a more general way, framework. And we, we also consider the anti-soft control problem, like how to, uh, that is how to recognize and, and pro pro prohibit shoes. It's, this actually happened in uh, eBay or in Taobao in China, that the seller will, might hire somebody to, uh, to, to pretend to buy goods from him and write good comments. And, and this actually is like a shoe. So, but there's still no mechanism to stop this, I mean, to recognize who is the shoe, who is not, who is a real customer. I think this is a very interesting problem too. So I, that's all for my talk. Thank you. We have time for questions. Yeah, yes. That's right. Yeah, uh, have, you, have you tried models where you have uh, agents that have some kind of limited global knowledge? Because uh, this depends very heavily on the fact that all the agents are globally ignorant. They are com completely globally ignorant. Let's say in a, in a real life scenario, if eBay or say a political agitation would work like that, say a political agent, mm -hmm. somebody would want to induce a revolution by talking to people. That's sort of the agitation model that you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, but but normally all the agents around they're not completely globally ignorant. They have some kind of ideology that they won't change even if they're sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a good question. Um, actually, uh, if you look at the Wixam model, the normal agent do not interact with all the others. They only interact with the, their neighbors. Yeah. So it's by it's, so it is not a, a, a completed interact interacting model. But there, the shield is a, is a global one, actually. 
because we want to affect everyone. Yeah. But, but you have not tested it against a world where your local agents have some kind of limited degree of global fixed uh, behavior models. No, no, not yet. <laughs> not yet for that model. Yeah. Other questions? Well, we, we can think about that. <laughs> I have a, actually I have two questions. Oh. Um, so if there's no other question, I'll just drop mine. It's one of the prevalence uh, <laughs> standing here. Um, uh, so about bird flocking. Yes. Um, in your model, you know, mm -hmm. all the agents have the same set of rules and the same uh, influence, if you like. Yeah, they yeah. Can, uh, and, but in, in bird flocking, actually, mm -hmm. what happens is that the bird which is flying in front um, has a, that information is more dominant in, mm -hmm. for the whole flock than individual information of the birds underneath that, so to say. Because if he moves, actually, the rest will follow. The, 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 the direct information transfer into the behavior of the flock is more dominated by the first bird than by the, by the rest of the birds. So what would happen in your system? Because in your system you assume that every agent basically identical, have yeah. the same kind of yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. whatever. And, mm -hmm. and so what would happen if you would allow for, um, let's say that so, some agents uh, are more dominant or, mm -hmm. which basically comes a bit to your question also. So if, if there's some dominance yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in the system, did you look into that? And, no, yeah, but yes, but actually, th I think this is also a very good question, and actually, we can consider a case. I mean, in this way, that if we have two kind of shoes, each each is uh, going to the different direction, then what will happen? Just like they are competing. Yeah. yeah, I think that will be a good way, a uh, good direction to look at. And um, as for folking, I remember that uh, there is a there is a work done by some French French scientists. They they uh, take video of the real group and they analyze the data and they find that the, 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 the birds will look at the most nearest neighbors. That is like uh, six or seven neighbors and then not designed by the, not defined by the, the radius of R. No, but the point yeah. is that that's, that's true, so that's very local. But the point is that if you, um, mm -hmm. if you have a bird flock and you would change the, one of the birds, just in the middle of the flock, you would change its direction artificially mm -hmm. by shooting it. <laughs> so you shoot it out of the flock. Um, then, of course, there's some kind of disturbance, but it's directly corrected. Um, whereas if you shoot the first bird that is fly flying in front, front mm -hmm. then the flock actually uh, uh, disperses. So there is a difference. Yeah, there is yeah. a difference. The, the, the influence, it's not that, it, that all the uh, agents, if you like, yeah. have the same influence on the total system as, uh, as the other agents, yeah, which, yeah. which I find disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, actually, I think some scientists also uh, work on the case that they call leaders in the group. Yeah. Yeah. And the and they they have a and they they, they claim that oh, uh, maybe I can show a little bit about that. Not this one. Oh. Yeah. It's leadership by numbers, and uh, and they find that the larger the population size of the animal, the proportion of the information agent, which is called a leader needed to guide the group will be smaller. And uh, we, we have, uh, I have a colleague uh, work on this uh, model and they prove that, they prove this, um, prove this phenomenon mathematically. But, uh, but in this model, actually the information uh, agent is, is the agent that they have, uh, they have the, their purpose for one a special direction. But they do not have any feedback information. They don't look at others, they just fly that way. And that, it, that actually is a kind of simple shield, I think. Yeah. They just don't have strategy. They just fight that way. But ha they have a lot of them. I so, to that, I yeah, yeah, and yeah, that, that's a good Any point. Any other questions? Just I'll just point out that uh, in game theory, <coughs> there are some papers mm -hmm. which have the following flavor, that uh, if there are multiple Nash equilibria, oh. then uh, you can uh, have an agent with preferences or specific equilibria, mm. and then those agents can be, can tip the outcome into one of the equilibria or not. Oh, so is it, is it by X law? Uh, I, I have read, read a paper by mm -hmm. him that is, they use some special agents in, in a game, and then they will, they can change the, the, the they change the group from one equilibrium to another equilibrium. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think, yeah. I think, yeah, in, in their world that the shield, the shoes are very simple. They they do not have feedback strategy, but they have a number of them, and they look at how 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 they affect the group, the behavior. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, so I suggest we stop here. Oh, that's one more question. That's okay. oh, last question. <laughs> so my understanding is that so far you have uh, uh, many started how to use shield to generate synchronization or to generate cooperation. How about the other way to destroy the cooperation or to destroy the synchronization? Um, I, I think I... Do we need to be yeah. Yeah, I think, I think I actually can, can do uh, then do the, the one job that is to use the shield to destroy synchronization by by I mean by my hand I can I control the shield I, I can seduce the the agent moving uh, away from the group this I can do it's it's not not a very difficult thing to to destroy synchronization and for cooperation uh, we we have not looked at that yet but we will be interested to study on this question too <laughs> Uh, so uh, basically, uh, my understanding is that the assumption here is like you actually have an external controller to control the shield, and this uh, controller basically know the rules and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. more or less like know the global information of the uh, system that the controller wants to control. Yeah, yeah. So what if the, uh, this external controller's information is not so accurate? Yeah, Either yeah. they're talking about this uh, system or talking about the rules, then uh, how good the chance is is like like say finally the control result actually go off the, uh, have you ever studied that? Like like uh, sensitivity analysis or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, here um, we, we use, the, for the, control, the controller for the shield use global information, like in the Wixet model. And this is, uh, and we, we, we also thinking of the way that it's just to use local information. But I think it's, uh, it's impossible if you only use local information no. For a shield uh, to to synchronize a group, I think it's impossible. Actually, my question mm. is like, what if mm. the controller has global information but not so accurate? Then uh, oh, how okay. sensitive it is okay, I see. to yeah. this kind of inaccurate information? Because typically, it is very difficult to get uh, very accurate global information. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think this is a good question to see. Yeah, but well, we haven't uh, haven't research topic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> need need for my whole life. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.